Well, if you didn't do it, one of your brothers did, so you're taking one for the brothers. Seriously, that's what he was told. Excuse me? I'm taking a death sentence for somebody else? What? Hi, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the movie Just Mercy, which I just saw actually a couple weeks ago. I was trying to wait to make this video because my husband Adam actually met one of the real life characters who was in this based off of a true story story, but we were unable to do that, so I'm gonna do it by myself and we'll add that in another time. So if you're interested in a movie review of Just Mercy with Michael B. Jordan, Jamie Foxx, and based off of the life of criminal justice attorney and warrior, Brian Stevenson, from the perspective of a prison wife, of a man who's serving an unjust life sentence, please keep watching. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you stumbled upon this video. My name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Wives and Families. I am also the author of a book called The Comeback Code, and I use my years of experience to help prison wives and family members feel educated, empowered, supported, and loved, not only while their loved ones are serving time, but long after they get out, we do not glorify or glamorize prison or street life here. We are making the best, finding the silver lining of a crap sandwich type of a situation. We are living above stigma and we are beating statistics. So to see more of this pretty face and hear more about prison wife life, prison life, you name it, we've got it. My husband calls in sometimes with stories from inside of prison, subscribe, and then also ring that little bell to be notified every single time I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and sometimes we try to do live videos in between. I've been told by countless women over the past, what are we up to, eight years that I've been doing this online, Adam's been incarcerated for 20 years, that they would not be able to get through their journey without me. <sighs> Hashtag humbling. When I get an email, a message, or a comment like that, oh, I love you guys. So without wasting any more time, let's get into this video. I'll read you a little bit about the movie and then we'll go into how I've learned about Brian Stevenson, how I learned about his book, how I learned about the movie, and how I feel about it. That's a lot of information, but I promise I won't keep you here forever like usual. The front row says, in its focus on the racial bias of the justice system, Just Mercy, which stars Jamie Foxx and Michael B. Jordan, is a drama of immense power, and yet it remains strangely impersonal. Just Mercy is one of the rare films that in addressing a specific injustice reaches below the surface of the action to reveal the systemic inequalities that cause it to happen. Based on a true story, the movie presents the conviction, incarceration, and planned execution of an innocent black person in a way that indicts the biased justice system that is faced by black people all over in the United States. I learned of Brian Stevenson back, I think it was 2015, but when you're going through this and you've been involved with somebody who's incarcerated for a stretch of time, for my loved one, we're just going into his 21st year, all of the years kind of blend together. So I believe it was around 2015, but I could be off by a year or so. Adam was really involved in criminal justice reform inside of prison. He got involved in what's called an inside out class, where a local university professor was bringing college students into the prison and inmates who were taking this class, they would actually sit college student inmate, college student inmate, college student inmate, and they would discuss criminal justice issues. These college students would have their eyes open tremendously because they were getting the real life inside perspective from these inmates and these inmates were using their these experiences constructively to help educate these people that were eventually going to work in criminal justice and eventually be working inside of these prisons. So they could kind of help shape and mold them and make it a positive or at least a more positive experience for everybody involved. They could work together. So the professor brought in these students. So right around the time that Brian Stevenson was becoming a mainstream name, at least in criminal justice circles, and he was releasing this book, Just Mercy, the professor of that class 
was able to get in touch with him and they were able to bring in one of the characters, char I keep saying characters, but he's a true life person whose story was told in this book. Originally, I thought it was the main character of this story when I was seeing the movie, but then I realized that character passed away in the 1990s. So I believe it was a second person in the movie that we'll talk about or the book that we'll talk about later. At the exact same time, I had gone to a conference called, it was the Conference for Higher Education in Prisons. And it was hosted at the University of Pittsburgh that year. There was a man who lectured there named Glenn Martin. He was also an attorney involved in criminal justice reform and prison education. So I don't remember if it was through Glenn Martin's newsletter that I found out about Brian Stevenson first or if it was through Adam. It doesn't really matter. It was the chicken or the egg. They were right around the exact same time. Adam read the book. I wound up not reading it. My life just got a little bit hectic at that point never stopped and I just didn't have an opportunity to read the book. However, I heard that Just Mercy was made into a movie and I hands down wanted to see it. Yes, I wanted to know the story, but more importantly, I wanted to support anything Brian Stevenson related. I wanted to vote for him and for this movie and to tell Hollywood that I was voting with my dollars for more movies like this in the future. So I called my sister because I'm one of those people, I don't like to go to the movies alone. And I was like, do you want to go? And I bribed her because hashtag Michael B. Jordan. Do I need to say more? Huge, huge, huge fan. So she was like, absolutely. Let's go in a couple of weeks when I have a day off. Winds up this was on maybe a Wednesday. That Saturday, she called me. She said, do you want to go see that movie? We'll go to dinner in the movie because her boyfriend had the flu, so their plans got canceled. I was like, Shh, yeah, because girlfriend doesn't have any plans on the weekends besides for visiting prison <laughs> to see my husband, which is happening few and further between at this point and won't happen for quite a while. We'll talk about that on another video, but also making these YouTube videos for you guys. So we went to go see the movie. We actually went to go get sushi that night. If you care, we're not going to add that in because this is getting way too long. So we went to go see the movie and the audience was probably 75% black and 25% white. And I'm telling you that for a reason, because in an interview later that Jamie Foxx had done, Jamie Foxx plays the character who was on death row about to get executed, who was Brian Stevenson's first client. He said in an interview later that they tested audiences when this movie was first coming out and the first audience was primarily black and it tested at a 97% success rate. Then a couple of weeks later, they tested on a predominantly white audience and it tested at a 98% success rate. And then right after that, right around the same time, the film got a standing ovation at the Toronto Film Festival. So they knew this was going to be a knockout home run, hit out of the park story. So it's surrounding the attorney, the criminal justice attorney, Brian Stevenson, young Brian, right when he was getting out of Harvard University as a lawyer. I believe he was from the northeast area of the country, but I don't remember. And it took place in the mid 80s. The case was from 1986. And they started with this scene with Brian and his mother on the front porch. And she was sweeping the porch and you could tell she was really upset. And he says something like, are you going to say goodbye to me? And she was really upset. And she said, I'm really worried for you. You probably want to rethink your position. He was a young black man moving from the Northeast to the deep South in Alabama to help people get off of death row. Because in his studies, the very first person that he met on death row was somebody who was around his exact age, who he just wound up speaking for two hours with because they had so much in common. He was a real life person. And he said to him, I will never stop fighting for people like you. And that guy was just so blown out of the water because he's like, why do you care? Nobody cares about me. And it just showed the injustices of the system. So Brian's mother said to him, do you really want to go do this? Do you want to go put your life at risk every single day in the deep South where it is still extremely racially biased and potentially become one of these people who is accused of a crime that you did not commit and potentially go on death row or lose your life because you're trying to help these people. I don't think it's worth it. And he said, well, I do respectfully, of course, to his mother. And he left. And basically the movie just turns into that. His struggles as a young black attorney against all white prosecution, all white judges and juries in these small towns of Alabama trying to get these people off of death row who are blatantly innocent. Evidence was 
completely overlooked or completely destroyed and tampered with. It was awful. I mean, there was a point where he got threatened. There was points where he got pulled over. There was points where the young white woman who was working with him was threatened. Her whole family was threatened. So it was a wonderful story of inequality and justice prevailing in the end and fighting for what you believe is right, despite any kind of issues that could arise from it, any kind of danger. Just fighting for what you believe in so strongly. And so many of us, myself included, have so much anxiety around stuff like that, but it is the freedom fighters, it is the warriors, it is the Brian Stevensons of the world that truly wind up making a difference. And you see people on death row, and I'm telling you, at one point I started crying during the movie, and just like little tears when they showed certain things, by the end of the movie there was just honestly tears blowing down my cheeks and I'll tell you this from the prison wife perspective the perspective of his family and what they were put through and what they went through during this and staying by his side and never giving up on him and what his wife specifically went through and his children went through there was points that if I was not in public I would have had to pause the movie and just heaving sobs. I wanted to literally go in the corner and shake and cry because of how much this touched home for me and how much this touches home for you and all of us that have been faced with injustices within the system. It is disgusting, it's disturbing, and this movie brings it all to light. So when I was watching reviews as I was doing research for this video, two things that popped up that I wanted to address was somebody said that it wasn't the best movie because it wasn't a feel-good movie left you feeling beat up and I could tell you it did 100% it did I went home that night I felt like I got hit by a truck I called my sister the next day and I was like I am emotionally beat up and exhausted she said I feel the exact same way and aside from Adam being really far removed from her she doesn't really have any involvement in the criminal justice system. It's a heavy movie. That's the point. The point is to get people riled up enough and to tug at their heartstrings enough to want to get involved enough to make a change. It's to open people's eyes. The other thing that was a review that I do not agree with that people said was it was kind of predictable. There wasn't really anything thrilling or that came out during the movie that you were shocked. Well, that's not the kind of movie this was. It was based off of a book. So you probably should have read it before you went to see it or at least have known the story. That wasn't this type of movie. It wasn't meant to be a thriller. It wasn't meant to be a shocker. It wasn't really meant to show you anything that you didn't already know or probably know would happen. That wasn't the point. But I believe that anybody who has involvement with the criminal justice system, and let me pause myself by saying this, if you're watching this video, whether you do at the moment or not, you have involvement with the criminal justice system, which is completely broken in America. So you can choose to look the other way and that's your involvement, which is not involvement and just letting a problem continue to happen. And it doesn't matter if you agree with my views or not, by you not getting involved, then you have no say in this matter. You can't make a change for whatever you do believe is right or wrong. Or you can get involved. You can vote for these types of things with your dollars. You can buy a movie ticket and you can go support Brian Stevenson, his work, his organization. We have huge names behind him. Michael B. Jordan played his character and I do I need to say anything about Michael B. Jordan? One of our greatest actors of our current generation, if you ask majority of the people who have reviewed this video. That is one thing that people have said across the board and have agreed with. His acting is stellar. He got into the part. He delivers his lines beautifully. He really does justice to Brian and his work. They did a lot of work together preparing for this. And Brian said that he's so happy with the way it turned out. And he was joking. He said, the only thing that you don't have to get in character with, he said, is you can keep the Creed six pack and that body. He said, you don't have to get a lawyer body for this video, which I thought was adorable. Then Jamie Foxx plays the man who's on death row for a murder he did not commit. And he tells this beautiful story that I just saw on an interview he did with Ellen when I was researching for this video. He said that his father was a teacher. He taught him everything when he was younger. His father taught other children. He said not only did he teach him and make him play basketball, he also made him play things like tennis. And he couldn't understand. He said, Dad, why? That's like a white people sport. In so many words, I'm paraphrasing, he did not come out and say it that crudely, but 
I don't think there's anything crude about that. So his father said, because you need to be well-rounded and you need to figure out what you like. Eventually his father fell victim to being incarcerated for, I think it was close to a decade. I wanna say around seven years for $25 worth of an illegal substance. He didn't say which substance it was. However, he told his father in a letter that he wrote to him because he didn't go see his dad in prison. He said he just, he doesn't have the heart to go see people under those circumstances and like that. But he said, dad, I'm doing really well now. And when you come home, I'm gonna take care of you. And he said his father has been living with him for the past 20 years. Here come the tears. I swear you guys, I'm so emotional today. I don't know why. I do know why. Hello, hormonal woman. So he said eventually, I think he said a couple of years ago, he took his dad to go see the US Open, to go see Venus play. And he said that they both looked at each other with tears streaming down their cheeks at how far they had come. So let's just break it down to a nitty gritty movie review. In my opinion, in two words, Oscar worthy. The end, mic drop, they did amazing. Every character hit it on the head. When I was watching the real life people on a 60 Minutes episode that I had downloaded and watched to prepare for this video, the characters were on point as far as they looked, as far as they spoke. It was eerie how similar they were able to play these characters. My sister and I didn't even recognize Jamie Foxx in that movie. And you could judge me, hate on me, whatever you want. We literally were like, that guy's so familiar. Who was he? And then when I Googled it, I'm like, oh my God, it's Jamie Foxx. She's like, it was? And then we were both like, duh, it looks just like him, but not amazing. They had him look just like Walter McMillan. I think my favorite was the person who played the jailhouse snitch because he had suffered severe burns when he was a little boy. So he was in a fire. His mouth was kind of droopy and his face was kind of off. And he had this kind of drawl to his even Southern drawl accent. And he played it incredibly. So the acting, A plus, amazing. Five stars, if you ask me. Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx both said that this is the most important movie that they've ever made to date. In an interview with, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I watched a while ago, I, it, one of the late night comedians, I don't remember, but he, he said to Jamie Foxx, do you remember your rap sheet? Do you remember the movies that you've done in the past? And he said, yes, I do. And to date, this is the most important movie because of the topic that it addresses. I have to say the villains in this movie, the sheriff, the prosecution, did an excellent job as well. Brian Stevenson had an assistant named... Eva. She was played by an actress named Brie Larson and she was an amazing person. She was a young white woman and what I loved about her character was that she brought some comic relief to the movie so I loved her. And my favorite quote from this whole entire movie was at one point Brian Stevenson, Michael B. Jordan, had gone over to the prosecutor's house because the prosecutor was playing hard ball and he was not hearing it. He was basically was like, get out of the town or we're gonna screw you over. And Brian said, no, I'm not giving up on him. So he goes over to the guy's house and the prosecutor is starting to get, or the, the other side's defense attorney, is that the prosecutor? Whatever he is. The lead attorney for the state was starting to get a little bit nervous because his lies were starting to kind of get uncovered. So he knocks on the guy's door, it's like dinner time. So the guy comes out and he was like, don't ever come to my house again at dinner time. And Brian says to him something along the lines of, why are you doing this? You know what you're doing is wrong, da da da. The state's attorney is just going on and on and on and on about how this was going on for 20 years and his case and da da da. And Brian turns to him and he says, our job is to defend people and justice, not to defend convictions. <gasps> Chills. That line cut through me like a knife and I will remember and use that line from here on out in so many different areas. We defend people, we defend justice, we do not defend convictions. I'm about to sit here and sob like a baby once again because every single time we try to get Adam relief off of his unjust sentence, he was guilty. He deserved the 20 years that he has done, which is the top end of the amount of time that he could have or should have gotten for his guideline range for the crimes that he did. However, he was enhanced another 205 years unjustly. And I have all videos, tons of 
videos on the channel, so we're not getting into that right now, but if you're new and you want to, just go back on the channel and watch my legal update videos. There's a whole playlist for Adam. But the whole point is, nobody wants to help give us any relief because they just want to defend that high, juicy number conviction. And it is nauseating, it is painful, it's excruciating for everybody who has to go through this with him. The other thing that one of the movie reviewers said that I thought was so on point was he said, in a lot of legal dramas, there's a lot of yelling and a lot of overacting and a lot of over the top dramatic stuff by the actors to get points across. But sometimes that makes the viewer a little bit defensive. And something that Jamie Foxx did so beautifully when he played this character, Johnny D, was that he delivered his lines in a way that were sometimes just a whisper. And he stayed even the whole time. And Brian in the courtroom, played by Michael B. Jordan, when he delivered his lines, there was nothing over the top dramatic, lawyer-esque about him. He was very even keeled, very smart, very calculating in the way that he delivered his lines. That left the viewer with chills and warm fuzzies, but also gave you that feeling that that's how he left the judge and the jury. Another favorite part of mine was at the end, they showed actual live footage of the second guy getting out of jail, the guy that Adam met, which was a case that had a lot more media behind it because of the time frame. I believe that was 2012 or 2015. It had to be around 2015 because Adam said that when he met that guy, it was shortly after he got out of prison and he said that he was so impressed and couldn't believe that that guy turned around and went right back into prison to use his experience to help people despite all of the trauma, the serious PTSD that he was left with after years and years and years of being on death row. This is a very, very happy day. Uh, it's a tragic day, too, because Mr. Hinton has spent 30 years locked in a 5 by 8 cell where the state of Alabama tried to kill him every day. I'm just popping in while I'm editing just to let you know the sound of that woman's cry makes me cry every single time. So I'm sorry if it was a tearjerker for you guys, but whew, that's going to be me one day with Adam. And the guy did say this because I watched an interview with him and I don't remember what it was on, maybe 60 minutes as well. But he said something along the lines of, I'm thriving, but I live every single day of my life. Not one day goes by without sheer panic and terror because if they did it to me once, what's to stop them from doing it to me all over again? I live on the straight and narrow. I make sure that I do everything right every single day, but what's that mean? And imagine how traumatized somebody must be after doing nothing and being told, literally, this is in the movie, well, if you didn't do it, one of your brothers did, so you're taking one for the brothers. Seriously, that's what he was told. Excuse me? I'm taking a death sentence for somebody else? What? So that's what I'll leave you guys with. I know this video got way too long for a movie review, but this one just touched home so much. My husband met one of the real life characters, so it felt like it touched home even more. This all kind of came to light for me when I started getting involved with all the criminal justice movements and going to the conferences and speaking really loud on behalf of Adam unfair sentence and getting involved with people, not just for him. This isn't just about one person. This is about helping so many people, the 2.2 million people who are incarcerated, the mass incarceration problem in our country. This is me making my footprint and this is me doing my part to try to help. So you guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. But in the meantime, make sure you go see Just Mercy. Hands down, without a doubt, please go watch that movie. Please support Brian Stevenson. Please support Michael B. Jordan, Jamie Foxx, and all of the actors and actresses in Hollywood that are getting behind this. There are so many, Kim Kardashian, Kanye West, Alyssa Milano, Winona Judd, Judd, I could go on and on and on, but I can't because we've already been here for way too long. I love you guys, and I will see you beautiful, ladies and gentlemen, in the next one. Bye, guys. It's peculiar, peculiarly, peculiar, peculiar, peculiarly, ugh. 
and yet it remains peculiar, peculiarly. I can't say it, so give me another word. What's another word for peculiarly? Here are some synonyms for peculiar, strange, unusual, odd. Peculiar.